This morning we continue our series on the Lord's Prayer. The fourth petition, give us this day our daily bread. And what we're going to do today is we're going to break down, give us this day into three parts. Give us, number one, our daily bread. Wait a minute. Give us this day. There. Give us, number one, this day, number two, and our daily bread, number three. And then we're going to deal with the, the prayer of Paul from Philippians 4 that you just, uh, just saw on the screen. Let's pray. Lord God, may the words of my mouth, may the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our strength, our Redeemer. May these words be your words. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. You know, children have a way of, uh, you know, helping us to see through different eyes. Their sweetness, their innocence. And I, I, I found a few prayers from the Lord's Prayer of Children. One little girl began her prayer like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hello, what be thy name? Another five-year-old girl prayed, give us this day our daily bread and liberty and justice for all. A kindergartner asked God to give us this day our jelly bread. There was, then there was a little boy who prayed, forgive us our dentist as we forgive our dentist. And then my favorite is, our Father who art in heaven, how would you know my name? <laughs> Children, give us a different perspective. There's an innocence and a sweetness. You know, as adults, we can limit the power of prayer because it becomes rote. It becomes something, particularly in the Lord's Prayer, that we memorize the words and we just say them without really thinking through what it is that we are praying. I think such is the case with the fourth petition. We pray this petition without realizing the significance of what God can do when we put our full trust in God's providence. And, and so this morning, we examine, give us this day our daily bread. And listen to this. This petition is an antidote for worry. It is an affirmation of God's generous provision and the perfection of God's timing. An antidote for worry an affirmation of God's generous provision and the perfection of God's timing. So let's get started. Give us this day our daily bread. The fourth petition of the Lord's Prayer addresses the, our needs and God's desire to provide for our needs. In the New Testament, over 20 times, we are encouraged to ask. We're encouraged to ask, to ask God. God is waiting for us to ask. In, in the book of James, in chapter 4, James tells us you do not have because you do not ask God. You do not have because you do not pray before God. You do not have because you haven't laid your, 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 your needs and your desires before God. In Greek, a statement often refers back to a previous phrase, and that's the case with give us this day our daily bread. In this instance, it refers back to your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. In other words, the will of God is to meet our daily needs. Did you hear that? The will of God is to meet our daily needs. But this petition is more than just a completion of God's will. The Greek word dos, or donomi, is translated give. And here's what it implies. The provision of those things which are necessary. The provision of those things which are necessary. Now, let me be clear here. Give us, when we say give us in this prayer, it is not a demand. The prayer is an affirmation of God, of faith, that God will provide our needs. Even before we know of our personal needs... God is in the future, preparing the way for us, listening to us, 
but knowing what we will pray, knowing what our needs are. And, you know, for, for me, for me, worry is connected with trying to control the uncontrollable. As a result, our efforts to face that which we have no control invites us to feel helpless. And when we pray for God's provision in faith, asking for God's help, we give our control and our worries to God. (laughs) If we prayed as much as we worried, we'd have less need to worry. If we prayed as much as we worried, we had less need to worry. Second, give us this day. Give us this day our daily bread. It seems like in, in, when we translate it into the English that it's present tense, this particular day. But the Greek word eposon, translated this day, more accurately points to the future. Now, it's translated daily, but it is a daily continuing onward into the future. It is a rolling daily. It's, it, it's almost untranslatable in English when you take a look at the Greek and what it truly means about daily. It's not just today. It is every day. It is a request for us to give us today that which will be needed in the challenges for tomorrow. It's about living in God's timing. For when we pray, give us this day, we surrender the timing of our lives to God. Not on my schedule, O God, but in your time. May your divine provision be provided. Now, (laughs) I don't know about you, but I don't know how many of you have discovered that our timing, my timing, is not necessarily God's timing. I find that I'm always in a hurry. Anybody else in a hurry? I mean, yeah, I mean, are, are we brother and sister by another mother or something? You know, um, I, I, <laughs> I'm in a hurry. I've got to get things done. Hey, by the way, I am a busy, important man. Okay? And if you don't know that, ask Amy. All right? And she will tell you how important I am. Right. Okay, wait, but I need it now, God. But God does not work in a hurry. God's timing is perfect, preparing us for the challenges of the future. Waiting requires faith. God wants our trust moment by moment, day by day, one season to the next. Give us this day our daily bread, not just weekly, monthly, or annually, but God, when the timing is perfect, when we pray, give us this day, we put our lives and all that is before us in God's hands. Third, give us this day our daily bread. Now, in the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, bread is is not only used literally as, uh, as sustenance, but it is used metaphorically as, as God's provision. You know, l- literally, I mean, bread is important to that culture. It was, it was a, the base of their diet. And so to give us this day our daily bread is to give us the basis of, our, of, our, of the way that we live. It represents all our needs, physical, emotional, spiritual. The Greek word eposios artos, translated daily bread, is typically used to define or or describe divine provision. Okay, you hear that? You hear divine provision. So in that case, in that understanding, it's not just a prayer for food, but all that is needed to live within God's preferred will. And further, it's used in a future tense. 
Give us this day our daily bread. Not just today, but in every day that is to come. Eposios, translated daily, is more accurately translated. What is coming in the future? Not just today, but all days. And put these two words together. Therefore, we are asking to be under God's resources. The Bible does not say, may God supply all our greed. As much as we'd like it, it's not the way it reads. Nor does it imply, God supply all I want. There's a big difference. There's a fullness to the request to fill our needs, our physical, emotional, and spiritual needs, our needs, our needs. And it shifts the focus off of me and onto what God is doing in spite of our circumstances. When we put all of this together, we can expand the, the petition, give us this day our daily bread, as a prayer of asking for divine assistance, submitting to God's timing, receiving divine provision for all of life. More fully, the prayer could read like this. May your will include the provisions for all that is coming in the future. Now, think about that for a moment. Let that sink in. What if we prayed that prayer every day? May your will include the provisions for all that is coming in the future. For all the situations that you're dealing with, may your will include the provisions for all that is coming in the future. In the, at, at work, at school, wherever it is, may your will include the provisions for all that is coming in the future. I believe that Paul knew this. For in Philippians chapter 4, it's a very interesting prayer that Paul writes. Paul's in prison. Paul is awaiting execution. Okay? So you have to put a context around this prayer. And this is what he says to the church at Philippi. Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Paul might as well have said, Lord, give us this day our daily bread. Paul understood divine provision that was always enough to whatever days were ahead. God always providing what Paul needed to face each new challenge. And this is why Paul could write to the church at Philippi uh, these encouraging words in spite of the fact that he was waiting execution. Paul had every reason to be angry, discouraged, and depressed. Instead, (laughs) he encourages them to rejoice, to respond with gentleness, to not worry. And to let our request be known to God. In other words, give us this day our daily bread. It gives us peace and assurance to pray in prayer. Give us this day our daily bread. Knowing that in God's timing, that God will provide all that we need. Circumstances may do harm to our bodies. This world in which we live, which is broken... We may lose those that we love. We may go through times of sadness and joy. Our spirits at times may seem broken. But in this prayer, we look beyond the circumstances to the one who is ultimately in control. In some ways, to pray, give us this day our daily bread, it encourages us to be more generous. Give us this day our daily bread. We no longer need to hoard our blessings. We can share with joy knowing that God will provide. I'm absolutely convinced that when I'm at my best, and I'm not always at my best, but when I'm at my best, 
that God is the source of my strength. God meets my every need. When I trust God to provide, then it's easy to give time to help others, to give my time in service, to invest in worship and Bible study, to give 10% of my income as God, as God has, has asked me to do in the Scriptures. When God is my source, all things are possible. It is a faith issue. The more we invest in what God is doing through us, the more God provides. The more we invest, the more that God provides. So let's do a little self-assessment. What worries you the most right now? Health? Job, family, kids, school, the national economy, retirement, immigration, the election, the conflict in the streets of our nation. In these moments, do we think about asking God for assistance, trusting God's timing? Remembering God's resources? For God is already in the future working on our behalf. That's, that's what He promises in Numbers. It says that God is already six days ahead of us, preparing the way for us, for things that we don't even know that we are going to be dealing with. If we put our faith in Him to pray the prayer, give us this day our daily bread and all the days that is before us then God will be waiting for us. My testimony is God is always, has not always given me everything I wanted, but God has always met my needs. In my earliest memories of my mother, she had a favorite phrase that which she would use when things were hard. Now, as she approached the end of her life, her short-term memory disappeared into a fog of dementia. She could remember things 20 years ago as if they were yesterday. In fact, one time I came in, I would, I would go by and see her two or three times a week, and I said, what did you do yesterday? And she said, I went to the Texas Wesleyan basketball game. I said, you did? She goes, yeah. Um, I said, did they win? Did they win? They're undefeated. And she said, and you know, there was this blonde guard that was playing, and I think I really like him. That was my dad. <laughs> she thought she was back in college. She, um, she knew when I was upset. And when I was stressed, and even, even through the fog of her dementia, she could read me. And she would re repeat again the affirmation, her affirmation of faith. She would say, Johnny, we so often want God to act on our time schedule, but there's no doubt God is always right on time for those who love him. When my daughter was little, she would often sit in my lap for a few moments during football games that I would watch. She got bored quickly. Um, she didn't understand it. She knew I loved it. Well, one, one afternoon, Saturday afternoon, she said, Daddy, would you take me to a football game? I said, wow, okay, you know, that'd be great. So we went to the football game, and she didn't even make it to the first of the game. She, wanted, she was ready to go before the game started. So I, I took her down, and I showed her the cheerleaders, you know, and they were cheering, and she really liked that. And she liked the band, so I took her over by the band and let the band play, and she liked that. And I convinced her that there was going to be a show at halftime. And so she decided that she could wait until halftime. But after halftime, she was done. She was tired. And so we were leaving, and I going down the stadium steps, I grabbed her hand, and I said, honey, hold on to my hand. And she said, daddy, I am so tired. You need to hang on to my hand. When we got to the bottom of the steps, I picked her up and 
carried her to the car and strapped her in. She looked at me with those tired brown eyes, huge brown eyes, beautiful brown eyes. And she said, Daddy, I love you so much. In the same way, God is ready to hold us tight. Even carry us if necessary. So let us pray. May your will include the provisions for all that is coming in the future. Hold us close, Jesus. Carry us when our strength is gone. For God is our source. When we don't know what to do, God is our wisdom. When we run out of energy, God is our strength. When we look desperate, God is hope. When we are stressed, God is our peace. When we are exasperated, God is our patience. When we are overwhelmed with guilt, God is our salvation. When we feel like giving up, God is our encouragement. When we, we have a great God. We have a God who loves us more than we can imagine. God is the source of all things. And God is waiting for us to ask, hear this, in faith, submission, and expectation. At the height of Jesus' ministry, 5,000 families came to hear him teach. After he was done, they were hungry and there was not enough food. The disciples came to Jesus and said, what are we going to do? They didn't have an answer. This little boy shows up with five barley loaves and two fish and says, Jesus, hey, I've got this. Could that help? Now, I want you just to imagine. I mean, the disciples watch this little boy come up with this lunch and give it to Jesus, and they're rolling their eyes, kind of turning away from Jesus <laughs> so that Jesus wouldn't see him, you know, smirking and whispering behind his back. And Jesus takes the loaves and breaks them, and breaks them, and breaks them, and the fish. And in spite of the doubts, Jesus fed them all. A meal for thousands. Now imagine what would happen if we put our resources in the hands of Jesus. Just Imagine.